the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was incarnate and became man and took flesh, he began for us a great change in our nature. And the beginning of that change in our nature came when we followed him in baptism. The Lord Christ went to be baptized by St. John the Baptist as a first clear act in beginning to change who we were. And when he was baptized by John the Baptist, and we beheld, as you heard today, and the story that we all know, that the Lord Christ, the Son, was baptized, and a dove appeared, which symbolizes the Holy Spirit, and a voice came from heaven with the Father proclaiming and saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we today know that this was the beginning of our interaction with Christ, not just that he was someone that we heard about or someone great that we wanted to be like, but that through this baptism and our subsequent baptisms, we became sons and daughters of him. And when he broke this seal of newness, we also entered into this new area, this new beginning. That's why for us, the baptism or the sacrament of baptism is so important to who we become and who we are. Because when we're baptized, as we say during the baptism, we, do, we go from darkness to light. I'll read to you a verse, it's a couple of verses from the epistle of St. Paul to Titus, which we read today. And this is the change that happens. Listen, for we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. That was before. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, we had nothing to do with this, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, when he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, this is the baptism, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The key word in that last section of the verse is heirs. Heirs as in we become sons and daughters, family members. So when we were brought into this grace, this new place, we left the old things behind us. We don't need the old anymore. We have the new. Just like when a child gets like a video game system, they love it and they play with it. And then when the new one comes out, they throw away the old one or they give it away. They don't want it anymore. They have something new. And if they go back to the old, you look at them and you say, why are you going back to the old stuff? You have the new stuff in front of you set up on your television. Why are you going back? If you think about it with everything that we do, just like, for instance, if you were working in a company and you did well, and then someone found out that you were doing so well, and they said, why don't you come work for us? We'll give you double the money and double the time and double the prestige. And so you go and you work in this new company. You don't wake up one day and say, you know what? The old company, I'm just going to go and work for it just one day, and then I'll come back. No one does that. They've left the old. This is the new. In fact, 
when we leave the old job, it's almost like we can't wait to leave because the new job is so much better. And it would be silly of us to go back and say, I just wanted to stop by. I'll just work here today just one time. It'll be okay. No one does that. And so if we look carefully in the beginning of that verse that I just read, you, you have to read it and hear it and see, am I still doing these things? Am I still at my old job? Am I still playing with the old system? For we ourselves were also once foolish, meaning we're not foolish anymore. So if you're acting foolishly, then you've backed out of the grace that you've been entered into. Disobedient. If you're continuing to be disobedient, then you're not sitting in the grace that you've received. You're going backwards, not forwards. Deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures. This one is important because we struggle with this so often. Where we go and we think, is, is dancing a sin? Is drinking a sin? Is smoking a sin? Is dating a sin? All of this kind of stuff. We look towards the world and what they're doing, and we say, I'm going to step out of the grace that I've been put into, that I've been granted, this salvation that I've received, and I want to go back and investigate and see. So is the thing that I've left better? No one would do that in the reality of life, even in the small things. So we, when we're speaking about salvation and becoming heirs of Christ, and this great change that happened to us, as St. Paul said, not because of anything that we did, but he gave it to us freely. If we can't appreciate this new grace that we've received, this better thing that we have, then we'll constantly be, constantly be looking back behind us and wishing we could do this or that or this. And then we get entrapped. And we start to look and feel like, I can't. I wish I, did. I wish I would have done more of this. I feel like I missed out. I missed out of all the things that, the fun things that people are doing. I missed out on having the stuff that I wanted to do, that I think about, that I watch, that I see. And we start to crumble and go back and start to turn around and go back to the things that we've left. And all of a sudden, we're back in the mess back in the dirt, back in the things that we left a long time ago, and we don't even know what happened. And then we begin to rationalize, this is not so bad. Everyone else is doing it. There are Christians here doing the same thing. Now we live in a Christian country. So what they're doing, what we have here, this is a cultural difference, that's all. It's not really different. And we start to think and we start to convince ourselves that where we are is fine. But to be frank and be honest, if we've truly turned away from the things that we should have left, there should be no doubt, there should be no regret, there should only be grace. And this grace that we've received is always with us. And the spirit that we've received inside of us stays with us forever from the moment that we were baptized. And Abuna poured out the oil on our whole body, on, every, on our eyes, on our nose, on our mouth, on every joint. We've now realized that we're different. And the spirit that dwells within us is powerful. It just needs us to comply. It needs us to decide, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to live. This is who I want to be. I want to be a son of Christ. I no longer want to be a part of the world. Before, in the early Christian church, Christians were so different than the rest of the world that it was obvious what the differences were. Now we live in a time where, like I said, we live in a Christian country. Everyone around us is supposedly Christian. It's changing over time, but I can think about like five, ten years ago. Everyone was Christian. So if a Christian person is doing keza, 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 I say that's, a, that's what Christians do. And so we fell into a trap where we're not separate from the rest of the world anymore. We're not different. We're not special. We need to go back. And we need to truly assess. Have I actually left what I was supposed to leave? 
Have I actually turned against the things that I've left? Have I actually made a commitment to say, I'm Christ's, no one else's. No sin is more powerful than my relationship with Christ. No person is more powerful than my relationship with Christ. No desire, no material thing is more important than my connection with my Savior. And so today is a reckoning, a reminder, a reminder of saying, I no longer am living in that mess anymore. And I'm no longer going to be back and forth. I'm no longer going to have one foot in and one foot out. Just in case, just to see. Just like I've said this example for a long time ago, like someone on a baseball team. You join the team. You don't say, you know what, this inning, I want to go play for the other team just a little bit. I just want to see what it's like. I just don't want to miss out. I just want to see what it feels like. No one says that. Your favorite basketball player doesn't go from team to team to team during the season just to try different things. Silly. We have to hold ourselves to a better standard and accept the grace which we've received and put all our body and our mind and our soul in Christ once and for all and truly turn back against the things that I've left. If I do that, then I can actually live in the grace and I can live in the spirit. And I can live in Christ Jesus, my Lord. What happens when I make that change and make that commitment is that when I begin to live with the Lord, that doesn't mean that everything will be perfect. I still will have struggles. I still will have to carry crosses because the Lord carried a cross. I still will have suffering because the Lord suffered. I still will go through difficult times because the Lord went through difficult times. The difference is that when I'm living in sin, then I have no example. But when I'm living in Christ, when I'm struggling, when I'm beaten down, when I'm hurt, or I'm scared, when I'm tired, when the cross is too strong, I have Christ himself who first carried the cross. When my sadness is too deep, when the betrayal is too strong, I have Christ who was himself betrayed. And I can look to him and see his example and call upon his holy name and say, Lord, you who was betrayed, help me with my betrayal. Lord, you who carried the cross, help me with this cross that's on my shoulder. You who has gone through darkness in order to save me, help me as I also go through darkness. I have an example now. But if I keep going back and forth, I never make the connection. I never stop. I just continue going in this place. So let's today make a commitment and say, I'm no longer like everyone else anymore. I don't have to like make everybody feel like I'm enlightened and better and understand. I don't care about any of that. I just want Christ. And he will help me through my troubles and my struggles because the promise isn't that we won't go through them. The promise is that we will overcome in Christ's name. May the Lord help us to overcome in his name. May we hold on to his hand and say, you're my father. I'm not leaving you anymore. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm not going to keep messing my hands up and then coming back and clean them. I'm going to stay clean, stay pure for your sake. So you can help me through my troubles and my struggles, and I can truly be called a son or a daughter. And glory be to our God forever. I pay